All right, good morning. I'm Scott Perry. I am a simple man from Mississippi. That is my introduction. Okay. Um, so my job is to just set the stage about what we're going to deal with today. Um, as, you, as Tracy said, it's about being bold when we kind of started talking about how we were going to do this conference and what we were going to talk about. You know, I brought up, I was like, let's just reinvent the clinical trial. Uh, Alex, let's just redo it because I do a lot of LGS trials and the endpoints are great, but then when I'm talking to the families about the medicines or other treatments, I still don't really have the answers I need to, um, you know, to get them where they want to go. I got a drug I can give them, but I don't have the, med uh, the answer. So let's recreate it. So that's what it's all about. So I'm just going to set the stage. Um, you know, we start here, I found this, found this quote when I was thinking about what we're going to talk about, and this, I think this says it all, right? We have to participate collectively, we have to participate together, and only when we do that, both the researchers, the physicians, the patients, are we going to get to the solution that we absolutely need. Uh, and so that's what we're about today. So when I think about LGS, I always like to start with, is it even a syndrome we ought to be studying in clinical trials? And I think there's pros and there's cons. So the pros is that we have established criteria for the diagnosis of LGS. So we have a clear group um, to deal with. Uh, we've got adequate numbers. There's, there's plenty of people. You know, there are a lot of trials right now in rare diseases. And many companies keep going for the same rare disease. And we're starting to run out of patients um, that, that want that. There's a lot of trial fatigue. But LGS has, has the numbers. It's a fiscally responsible condition in my mind, and that's because not only do we have enough people, but we have a lot of seizures. And when you got a lot of seizures, we can get a trial done in a reasonable amount of time uh, and, and get an answer. Uh, and it's generalizable. It's present throughout the age spectrum. It has um, no regard for race or gender or ethnicity. Um, so we, we, can, we can take our results and, and, and take it to the larger population. And then it's quite applicable uh, in that almost every seizure type, in fact, every seizure type is present. So, you know, you can take the data that we get and really extrapolate it because, in, in, I mean, at this point, we're not to a point where we've got an absolute etiology to explain what we're dealing with. So really what we're dealing with are seizures, and we can extrapolate that data to a lot of other people that have these kinds of seizures. So um, there's a lot of value in that. What are the cons? Well, people always bring up there's varied etiology, so we're not studying a single disease. Well, we're not seeing, studying a single disease when we look at localization-related epilepsy either. There's lots of reasons for localization-related epilepsy, and we study it all the time. So that, that doesn't count. In fact, I would say this is a strength. So now you get, here's, here's your basket study. Great. Now all these people have LGS who end in a, everybody ends in LGS, but they have lots of different etiologies. And here's an opportunity to study lots of different etiologies. Some argue that it's poorly understood. Okay, so study it. Figure it out. <laughs> that, that's not an argument. <laughs> Uh, and, then, and then what we'll hear about later today are that some of the associated delays limit measurement of things that are non-seizure endpoints. Okay, figure out a better way to measure it then. That, that's your issue. It's not, that, it's not that the scales suck or that you can't measure it. Build a better scale. That's what we need to do. So that's what we're going to talk about. Those are the things we're going to talk about. So let's talk about, let's talk about what we measure. So often these trials are designed with measuring clumped up seizures. We lump them all into one big category, drop seizures, drop seizures, anything that makes you fall. Tonic, clonic, tonic, atonic seizures. That's kind of useful, um, but not completely, right? We just threw them all into one, one big category. We have convulsive or major motor seizures. So, you know, from a trial design standpoint, sure, it's useful. You get lots of seizures. You can clump them all into one category. You can measure it really quickly. But then when you get to a point of trying to talk to that family and say, I'm going to use this medicine because it's good for this seizure, that becomes a little more difficult. So let's look at, just real quickly, what medicines we have for LGS. No offense to anybody in the audience, but they're not that awesome. I mean, they're okay. 20 to 40% reduction overall, eh, you know, we, we can do better. And then when you look at them, what oftentimes we see, again, is it's, it's clumped, right? So then you look and you see some of them break it out, 
and they you know, see things like generalized tonic-clonic seizures respond better. Do generalized tonic-clonic seizures really respond better to that medication, or was that the easiest seizure to count? If the tonic seizures happened all night long and no one was counting them because they're all happening in sleep, then is that really the outcome, or it was just an easier seizure to count? And so I think we have to, we have to really think about how we look at the, the seizures themselves, how we count them. And then, like, what matters to families? Like, this is something I did when I was a resident. Uh, I, I did this study because I, I, I had this concept that if you had really bad epilepsy and had a lot of seizures, that just getting, like, 20% reduction, you would be, like, really happy about that. Uh, and, like, a person who, you know, has rare seizures, seizure freedom would be the outcome that they want. But when you ask families who have newly diagnosed epilepsy, are on one medicine or have failed a bunch of medicines, they all say exactly the same thing. What's important to them is number one, seizure freedom, number two, seizure reduction and severity. And when you ask them what is an effective medication, they all said the same thing, greater than 90% reduction sustained for over one year. Go find that medicine for me in LGS. Doesn't exist. Now, to be fair, the way we measure is not, not completely wrong. Um, so this was, uh, this was from the data in the DRAV-A trials, which actually looked at the caregiver global impression scale, which is kind of an overall how am I doing kind of scale, and, and did show that uh, you know, very much improved or much improved categories in the high end of that scale did correspond to a reduction in seizures around 40 to 50%. So using the 50% responder rate is not a bad thing. I mean, it does reflect that there is some overall improvement. And my point is, I just don't think that's good enough and we can do better. So today we gotta think about all kinds of new, I scrap it, start over, think about new ways to do it, how can we do it better? Um, you know, I, I often wonder, is it, is it ever possible we get to a point where the seizure outcome is individualizable? Everyone has a different reason of what, or a different goal of what they're trying to achieve with therapy. When we talk to people about epilepsy surgery, that's the conversation we have. What are we trying to do? Are we trying to reduce a seizure type, all seizure types? Are we trying to improve quality of life? Are we trying to improve, you know, get you off some medicines and side effects? What are we trying to do? That's individualizable, so why can't we individualize seizure outcomes and medication trials? Maybe we're just, maybe we're not trying to get reduction of seizures. Maybe we just don't want to use rescue medicines every other day. Maybe we just don't want to go to the emergency room you know, and be admitted. Maybe we want to decrease the risk of SUDEP. So there's a lot of different things we could look at. Um, seizures, of course, are not everything. We're going to hear about all the other things. Um, and, and if we get to that point where we get a really good treatment, we're going to find out that there's all of these other problems that are much more important, right? We see that in Dravet syndrome now. We've got a drug, we've got some drugs that decrease the seizures pretty well, and now seizures are not the big issue we're going to talk about. We've got to talk about sleep, we've got to talk about the behavior, all the other problems that come with it. So there are a lot of other issues that um, people uh, and their families with LGS have to deal with, and we have to think about how we're going to tackle that. Um, I just put this here. If you guys haven't watched it, you need to. Um, it's uh, an informative uh, session, I think be equally informative uh, as to what we're going to go through over the next two days. Uh, so you should definitely look at that. I'm sure it's going to be referenced uh, many times. Uh, and so with that, um, I hope everyone's well rested. I personally am not, but <laughs> we're going to get outside of the box. We're going to think about new ways uh, to deal with clinical trials. Uh, I want to thank Tracy for finding a photo circa 2007. Uh, for the, uh, the program. That was awesome. Appreciate you. Uh, I also want to thank Tracy for putting me as the moderator for pretty much every session, so I have to pay attention for the next two days. I'm going to do my best. Let's get to work. <laughs>